Yo, what's going on everybody? Hey, it is Jason and today we are going to do a Panzer fight stick for build and we've got all the parts laid out here. Uh, I apologize in advance. The chat is way across my uh, shop right now and if you've seen any of the things I've been posting in Discord, you'll know where my my shipping station is and I'm kind of temporarily using that PC to stream from and I think uh, this whole setup is kind of janky as heck right now, so I apologize. But I think it'll be okay. All right, so uh, what are we gonna build today? Well, let's take a look at the build sheet. Uh, this is for uh, a customer here on the East Coast. I've conveniently blocked their name off. And we are going to use some OBSC blue buttons. We're gonna do the assembly, of course. This is an opaque white all button layout uh, plexi. We've got you know, more blue buttons over here. We're gonna put a Brook Universal Fighting Board Fusion in it so they have maximum uh, maximum compatibility without any dongles or anything like that. Uh, we're going to do this silver Nutric uh, surround. Let's see. We've got a silver bezel here. We've got the civil or silver aux buttons here. Let's see. We've got an all button controller panel here. And then the chassis is this electric blue. Remember, that is the one that um, reacts to black light and I actually have a black light over here, so maybe we'll be able to do that on stream and hopefully it'll work. We'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, so no also we're going to use, you know, one of my custom right angle cables for the inside. We've got a USB-C pass through and some zip ties and some miscellaneous stuff throughout. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing, I'm going to take all this junk off so that I don't accidentally scratch anything. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw it in chat. I'm going to try and bring it up here on my phone and see if uh, I can monitor it that way. I've really got to get this whole streaming rig re-squared away. Now that I've got like permanent space and I'm not moving, I think I might actually upgrade everything and do a bunch of black magic stuff, which would be pretty sweet. All right. <clears throat> cool. Well, I have... All right, I think this is gonna work. Look at me go. Man, I'm basically a pro at this now. All right, cool. Now I can watch chat over there on my phone. We'll keep that off to the side. And uh, if you guys have any issues with the audio or video, let me know. Uh, again, this is temporary setup. I gotta get a nice overhead ring light for here to shine down. And I've gotta figure out something to do with this little Rode mic so that it actually doesn't get in the way but I digress. All right, let's go ahead and push all this off to the side. Here's what we're gonna use for tools. Flush cut trim trimmers. That's for these little guys, some zip ties. I'm gonna use uh, two different Phillips head screwdrivers. This doesn't belong here. And we're gonna use one of my Japanese uh, Allen keys. Uh, I got this in a whole set and this is probably the best set of Allen keys I've ever owned. Um, S and SK makes them, they're fantastic. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. The ever so satisfying opening of the case. All right, when the case comes in, this is what they look like. You know, once you get them out of the box, this uh, QR code will bring you to the build guide. I've built so many of these and I designed them, so I don't need that. So I'm gonna just rip right through it and we're gonna go ahead and slide everything out like this. And then we can just toss this in the trash. All right, first things, this is your bottom pad. Put it on top to protect it. This is the case for the customer. <clears throat> and then all this stuff here is just meant to keep it easy. Nice, a headband, that's a pretty good idea. All right, let's see. Hardware comes with the stick. Oh, this is the uh, easy wiring board. It comes with the stick. Here's the aux board, it comes with the stick. Some extra hardware here. Some extra buttons. I'll send these back with the with the customer and the wiring, which comes with the stick. That's the great thing about the Panzer. It comes as one big kit, so you don't have to worry about finding you know other pieces and parts to uh, assemble it. It's just like right there. So it does look expensive on the the you know on the the grand scheme or the surface, but when you realize all the pieces and parts it comes with, it's really a pretty good deal, I think, because you know a lot of cases instead of getting these, you have to buy six. Sanwa buttons, you know, so that's, or seven, if you have a turbo. So 
that's like 21 bucks. You know, if you want to do a wiring harness, that's another 20 bucks. That's 40 bucks. Um, then having to hand wire everything, sometimes that's a pain in the butt. Time is money. So, you know, just think about all that kind of stuff uh, when you're price shopping and considering your options. All right, so the first thing I like to do, flip this thing over, just kind of do one of those. And we're going to install the bottom rubber pad. <clears throat> so actually, before I do that, I normally take the two halves apart. So let's go ahead and just do that. Just the uh, eight total screws holding them together, the two halves. So we're gonna use that nice little uh, um, parts tray there to kind of square everything up, keep everything in one spot. Normally I would use my electric screwdriver for this, but one, I can't find it. I didn't really look. And two, I think it might be dead. It does make uh, assembling these a lot faster. <clears throat> I think uh, I'm going to be spending some time on eBay tonight. I, uh, I have a bunch of camera equipment and whatnot that I've accumulated over the years for streaming and, you know, general videography and stuff like that. Um, that one, I don't use very often, which, you know, shame on me, but two, I think I want to, like I mentioned earlier in the stream, I want to completely rig this up in a much more, um, how do I want to say it? A much cleaner and robust way. And by that, I mean, right now I've only got this one camera, but I actually have, th mm, I've got another one like this. This is a G7. So I got two G7s and I got a G99, which is a Japanese only version of the Panasonic Lumix. And then I've got a Blackmagic pocket cinema camera um, and then a GH5 and a GH4. So I got lots of cameras. And right now to feed everything, I'm using this A10 mini and it's great, but the A10 mini pros out and it's been out for a couple years and it can actually kind of pre preview all of your camera inputs and then it can save all of them individually so that you know as I'm filming a stream or something like that it'll save the raw footage and I can go back and edit it together for something that's better uh, not live so I think I'm gonna have to mess around with some of that stuff all right back to the task at hand all right let's get this pad installed uh, this is probably the most frustrating part I would say for the build because if you're like me and you've got OCD getting it lined up can you know be a nuisance but uh, once you do it a few times it's not so bad so what I do just peel this off here okay toss that in the garbage all right and this is pressure sensitive adhesive and that means it'll stick but it won't be permanent until you like flip the case over and actually apply pressure and actually set the glue so you have a little bit of play here all right so what I'm doing is I'm looking for the natural bend of the metal on the bottom of the case and I'm looking left to right to see if it's kind of aligned you know left to right and I'm a little too far left so that's why I always try and start with the edge that looks pretty good lay it down look there all right good we got a good good spot there so you can see here I'm just gently pressing down and that's just kind of getting it in place don't push real hard aluminum it's strong but it will bend if you push too hard don't uh don't put your your weight behind it yet all right now we can flip it over and now now you can actually push flat because now this whole thing is flat and you don't have to worry about potentially bending anything and you can see i'm just kind of going through it and pushing it down with my fingers all right that looks pretty good all right cool so now we're good there you can also kind of flip it up like i'm here and just push on the edges just to get some more pressure going and voila boom the bottom half of the case is done i would say you're like two percent finished at this point all right we're gonna set this off to the side all right next thing we're gonna focus on is the top so let's go ahead and open up our hardware here and i'm just going to pour it out into my little cup here throw that in the trash all right and this is just I'm crazy. All right, done. And 
we hit it all? All right, cool. In the hardware, that's where your light pipes are. That's where everything is that you're going to need to assemble this. Uh, first things first, though, I'm going to install the USB pass-through because it's easier when you don't have a bunch of stuff in the way. So grab out the surround. <clears throat> And then the pass-through comes with uh, nuts and bolts. We're going to use those, but we're going to use the lock washers from the, the Panzer IV kit. I think these are metric, and the ones that come in the kit are uh, Imperial or SAE. All right. And then we're going to take this, just push it in. Now, these actually fit pretty tight, so just kind of work it in. Voila. Now you got your nice pass through there that looks pretty good pretty clean and I always take there's like a little marking here it looks like a long sausage I make that face up when I push it in don't know why just always do uh, maybe because if it's facing up when you put the right angle cable in oh maybe I'm sorry facing down the right angle cable will go in and go away from the aux board it will fit this way too but it's a better bend this way all right so sausage part on the top of the case and then this will fit in perfectly cool <clears throat> all right so we'll just stick one of the, the screws in like this and then going over to our hardware we're going to look for these two little star washers they're lock washers the little guys like that probably can't see it on camera set it off to the side and then what we're going to do is we're going to put one on and then we're going to use the, the little nut here oh, that's the wrong nut you want the black nut that was in with the pass-through go ahead and tighten that down just finger tight and now we're going to install the other screw this is the hard one put the locker there and let's see if I can get it on the first try. Yes, perfect. All right. Now I'm going to use my slightly smaller screwdriver. <clears throat> and now that they're started, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten these down. Once you make it snug with the lock washer, you don't need to hold it anymore because the lock washer will prevent the, the whole assembly from spinning. All right. So... Now that we have it in place, let's take a look, make sure it's all level. There's a little bit of play, uh, manufacturing tolerance in these by design. Now that that's good, we can go ahead and take it. And I don't know why I'm holding it, you don't need to, uh, on the bottom here, because we already tightened the nut up against the lock washer, so it was good. All right, so that's good. Now we're, uh, we're in place. All right, next thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use this little box here. This is a trick I've picked up over the times. I'm just latch it back. Why is it shutting? There we go. Latch it back. And I'm going to just prop up the Panzer like this. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take these aux buttons here. And then I'm just going to drop them in place. Like so. And by propping up the stick, it lets them fall all the way. And you're not going to fight them when you try and put the aux button uh, board back in. Cool. And then we open up the aux board. And we're going to install that. Yeah, Des, I see your, your comment there about the Magic Boots. Um, the GP2040 was great because it integrated the ability to pull the, the data off of them so that you can authenticate, but it had the pretty much anticipated side effect of shooting the price of the magic boots up because Mayflash knew they were in demand. So hooray economics. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just line this aux board up like so. We're going to use these short screws. Jason and in his infinite wisdom, when he had the hardware packs made, um, I put the wrong dimension of the 440 screws. And of course what happens they're too long, they don't hold the board in, so I had to create a bunch of handmade additional packages to include with everything. So if you have extra screws when you're done, it's perfectly normal. All right, <clears throat> now let's go ahead and screw these in. All right, 
we're just going to get them loosely installed just so that we get them all done. Appreciate you guys tuning in, uh, watching me build tonight. I know uh, it's New Year's Eve and everyone's probably got much more exciting plans than me. I'm literally going to be in bed by nine. New Year's does not excite me anymore. Uh, I may actually pack up some orders so that uh, they're done and I don't have to deal with them tomorrow. We'll see. You know, very exciting stuff. All right. Let's go ahead and tighten all these down. And you don't want to... You don't want to tighten these down and crack the board. You just need to go to tight plus a little bit more and you'll be good. Oh, a magic boot that does everything like PlayStation and Xbox. That'd be pretty nice. Um, it's really funny because I'll tell you the, uh, when I did the Mad Cats TE3 review, I ripped them pretty heavily for requiring some sort of dongle uh, connection to um, make that controller work on the PlayStation 5. Now, mind you, it was a $300 stick, I think, if I remember, at launch. So it should just support it, and they're a huge company. It's not like a small company like me or you know some of the other guys out there making fight sticks. Um, and now it's like, oh, well, yeah, if, here's this inexpensive board that you can put in it. Um, but if you want to make it work on PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series, you're going to need to add this little thing to it. Um, I wonder if that makes me a hypocrite because I gave them so much crap for it or because I thought those pass-through things in the past were always kind of scummy. Nah, whatever. All right, now we're going to take these light pipes and we're going to go ahead and put them in place here. We're just going to slide them in first, <clears throat> like so. Just drop them in. There's those. That's the player ones. And now we have the one for turbo. I'm going to just drop that in. And now this is where we're going to be careful and we're going to just, you know, push them in with our thumb. We're going to seat them all the way in. You know, I'm holding the metal so that, you know, I'm not mashing down and potentially bending anything. Okay. And then we flip it on its side to make sure they're all seated. Yep, they all look pretty good to me. And here's a trick. If you ever get to a point where you're like pushing them in, you can't push them in any further because your fingers or whatever, uh, grab it. Just use the back end of a, a screwdriver and just push like so. And that'll seat it the rest of the way. And yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, good. So that's done. Let's go ahead and flip this thing back over. All right, next thing that we're going to want to do, uh, you'll notice I didn't prop it up on the, the thing because the buttons aren't going to go anywhere anymore, but we can leave it like that. Let's go ahead and open up uh, the fusion board here. I don't put stickers on sticks, so I'm going to toss that off to the side. Okay, we got the fusion board here. It looks surprisingly just the same as a universal fighting board. <sighs> I wish they would have been able to just add the fusion into the actual UFB, but alas, they couldn't. All right, so that's done. We can toss that off to the side in the garbage. Let's get the easy wiring out. All right, and uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and push this together, make sure the 20 pins lined up like so. Voila, good to go. And then we're gonna take these uh, four plastic spacers. We're gonna use these. And then we're gonna take the long number four forties here. The dangers of actually just mixing all your hardware together. And now we're gonna use these little plastic washers. Um, yeah, so regarding Brook and the Microsoft banning thing, they did release a new firmware for a bunch of stuff. I don't know if it fixed it. They may, they, it wasn't super clear to me um, if it's actually fixed, but 
I guess I don't have an Xbox. I don't, I'm not an Xbox guy anymore. Um, so, uh, I don't have anything to test it on, but, uh, weird. So I, I guess we'll find out. Um, all right. With these long screws out of, I didn't include these in most kits and I started these little plastic washers. Um, some people were complaining that their sticks were randomly disconnecting. And I think, I think it's because of the ground plane in the easy wiring system. Um, I think people were taking the screw and tightening it down so hard that it was scraping away some of the solder mask, which shorted the screw to the solder mask, which sorted it to the case. And uh, in all cases, everyone was using it on a fabric chair or in a place with carpet. And um, I think what was happening is static electricity was building up and if they moved, it discharged through the case and took the potential of ground from zero up a little bit. And that makes USB drop off, which would cause the stick to disconnect and reconnect. It was very strange. So now all of the sticks that are shipping have this, these little plastic washers on it. And I'm actually generating a big long list of all the Panzer fight stick purchases in the last year. And I'm going to be mailing out, um, these washers to everybody who bought one in the past so that they have them. Not everyone's affected. Uh, I've never been affected in that way because I don't have any carpet where I use these things. So uh, it's just one of those fluke things, I think. Okay, so we put the we put this little uh, spacer here and now I'm gonna stick the, the screw through it. And I do that on one of them so that I can take the fighting board here and kind of get it lined up and then I can screw it in place. I always like to start with the back because it's hard to get to and you just get that kind of taut. And then I'm gonna do it with the other one on the back as well. Oh, Toshin, hey, thanks, I appreciate that. How's everything going? I haven't seen or heard from you in a while. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and finish off with the rest of these. And so I'll just, now I can tighten that in. <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to get some music for the background of the stream. Something that's not copyrighted so I don't take a bunch of copyright strikes on it. All right, there we go. All right, there's the last one. Cool. And voila. Now we have the fighting board and the easy wiring system installed. All insulated, good to go. Move that off to the side here. And uh, we'll flip this over, and we are we are cooking with fire right now, folks. I'll tell you what. All right, so here's what we're gonna do next. We are going to open the bezel. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. This is gonna be a good looking build, I think. I'm very excited to see it done. Okay, and then we're gonna open the all button panel. I've started calling these the ABC panels, the all button controllers. Don't want to get in any trouble with anybody. And leverless just seems weird. So, uh, all right, go ahead and get this lined up. Drop that in place like so. All right, now the infamous peel of the Plexi. So uh, remember, this is a uh, all white Plexi. So I'm gonna just peel off the back, start in the corner. Super annoying. There we go. Now going forward, anytime I have a full build come in, um, I'm gonna try and stream all of those because uh, I actually enjoy streaming, chatting, you know, you know, just talking about nothing while I do this uh, with y'all. Rambling, some might say. We'll see. Um, unfortunately, I'm not good with jokes. I'm not going to make you laugh during all this unless I randomly sh shove a screwdriver through my hand, which has happened. Not on stream, fortunately. All right. Oh, my 
my gosh. I hate peeling Plexi so much. Probably, probably eight million ways better to do this, but since I only have one panel that's Plexi and that's on the overlay, I haven't really had to get that good at it. Yeah, yeah. So Tosha, no more ping pong balls. Actually, I threw that whole bag away at some point. I think it was right before I moved to Japan. So uh, what uh, what uh, Toshin's referring to is um, at Evo in 2016, I brought a big bag of of ping pong balls, and they all had printing on them, and uh, they had my logo on. I was Basically, you came up to the booth that I was at, you pulled one, and some of them had like 5% off, some of them had 10% uh, off, and a couple of them had 100% off. And uh, if you pulled the 100% one, you got that, your order for free. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't just carry those around anymore, and um, eventually I did get rid of it, so, or rid of all of them. And as I look over the stream, I realize you guys are missing something that's very important. So hang on, let me go fix this for a second. I uh, am dumb. And I need to do that. Because, of course, every time I stream, I'm going to put a new discount code up for 10% off of your order in the shop. And it's only going to be good for a couple days after the stream. So I think this one's good until the 10th for new orders. And you can only use it once. So make sure you get the order in good. It's just like a little reward for those of you who tolerate me on stream. Or come back and watch things. I don't know. It's up to you. All right. So uh, that's looking pretty good. We still got to finish peeling it. So let's go ahead and do that. And hopefully everyone can see that okay. Yeah, HSN in the background. Mm. I went, uh, so I went bowling today, yesterday, or two days ago? I forget. Uh, I decided I was going to buy a new bowling ball because I enjoy bowling. I'm not good at it, not very good at it. But, uh, you know, sometimes I can bowl like a 130, you know. So, you know, I figured, oh, with some practice and a proper bowl and not the house bowl, I, uh, you know, I could probably get into this more. My dad's been a bowler my whole life, he's really good. He's got the whole hook, and you know, he's got like six balls, you know, he's whatever. And now that he's retired, he literally bowls all the time in a league and for fun and just all sorts of stuff. So I was talking to him. I was like, hey, I think I'm going to finally break down by, by my own bowling ball, you know, blah, blah, blah. He makes some recommendations. And so I go out and I buy a brand new Storm, um, what did I get? Phase 2 ball. And it's got like asymmetrical asymmetrical weight in it, so it like helps curve it naturally and... Um, today was the first day I went out and I used it. It was literally the worst two games I've ever bowled in the last 15 years. I think I hit 70 in like 55. It was atrocious. And it's because I'm not used to a finger grip, um, on the ball. And it was like 15, it's a 15 pound ball. Most of the time when I go and I bowl at the house, you know, using house balls, I just grab a 12 or 13 because it's the, um, the uh, ones that have like the fingers that fit and because the balls are you know perfectly perfectly weighted round they, they're really hard to hook so um, needless to say I was not bowling that well and my wife decided to message my dad multiple times during our game and thank him for making my bowling game worse and then of course I got a phone call halfway through and he was like giving me a bunch of shit and then he uh, <laughs> and then he, he calls me afterwards. He's like, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to come visit and give you some lessons. And I was like, yeah, the first time in 42 years I've listened to you and gotten, taken your advice on something and it completely blew up in my face. So it was, uh, it wasn't a great day at the bowling alley, but I think I'm going to go bowling again tomorrow. All right. Now that we've got all the peels done, we've got all of the panels in place. Let's go ahead and get our screws that kind of hold all this stuff together and started all right candle pin i don't even know what that is is that like super skinny super skinny pins i don't know 
Oh, to make matters worse, at the bowling alley today, there was like three, a four, a five, and a six-year-old bowling next to me. One of them had a higher score than me at the end. I was furious. I was furious. But we still had a lot of fun. So, all right. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I like to grab the panels and just make sure that they're all kind of lined up properly uh, and hold it before I tighten any of these screws down just because, you know, you don't want to have to undo them later. Oh, mini, mini bowling balls. So I guess my 15, 15 pound ball is probably uh, way heavier than the little ones you guys are using up, in, up north. <laughs> Softballs, nice. Can you just take it and just like throw it that way? Overhand? <laughs> All right, cool. So now, now we're all bolted in. All right, good. Next thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and open up all these buttons. Yeah, you should definitely order another Panzer. Eventually I'm gonna get all of the uh, chats and, and whatnot with commands and stuff all squared away on the, on the stream as well. And there's a lot of stuff that's going on in Twitch now that I, I just, don't remember how to do any of it. I'm gonna have to hire someone to come in and advise me. The hardware part's always been my favorite, like physically setting up the stream and, and getting all the, all the technology in order with the cameras and the lights and whatnot, but the software side of it and getting it to look, you know, all the, the, fancy, the fancy pages and all the chats and all that stuff. Uh, Need to figure out how to do all that again. All right, so we did go, they are going with uh, clear buttons on this one. They're the blue, the blue clears. Ooh, plans for the Panzer in 2024. Well, Let's see, what's the, what's the plan in 2024? Well, we're gonna make a bigger case. There's gonna be another one. We're gonna call it the Panzer IV XL. There's a lot of things about the Panzer IV that I really like. I like the aux buttons, I like the LEDs. Uh, it just kind of creates a more complete setup. And because it's super easy to wire, that makes it even better. Um, so I think what we're gonna do is, uh, ooh, I've got this dirty. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit bigger this way, a little bit bigger this way. This is probably gonna stay off to the left. Maybe I'll move it off to the right just to change it up a little bit. Um, inside, it's gonna have the same kind of easy wiring setup uh, that the Panzer IV currently has. Um, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two PCB mounts on the inside, and we're gonna do two Nutrix on the outside so that you can hook both up. Um, the only thing I got to figure out is how I want to integrate wiring between the two boards uh, because there's a bunch of ways to do it and I just haven't figured out the easiest and most appropriate way yet. Um, so we'll see. All right, before we go ahead and install the buttons, let's, uh, go ahead and get some of these cables attached. Uh, first thing we're gonna do uh, which I should have done already is I'm going to hook up the aux wires. Look at this. And just like that, we've basically connected so many things. All right, here, five connections made for the player LEDs and the voltage there. Done. Let's see. What's this? Okay. Here's, uh, our touchpad, our L3, R3 and a ground connection. Done. Here's our turbo and uh, turbo LED, done. Start selecting home. Let's go ahead and, I like to feed it underneath this board here like this and kind of get it to go through. And then it'll come out the other side. That's not the side I want it to go out. I want it to come on the other side of the USB. There we go. Feed that through like so. And then voila. Just connect that to that one. And just like that, we've connected so many so many things. 
no one, no other, no other build on the, the market can do that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and zip tie these up right now while I'm just thinking about it. Cause I like to keep everything nice and neat. And the good thing is, is, you know, with this easy wiring, it's so easy to make it clean. Like you don't have to put a bunch of money and time into the sleeving, which is important to some people. I used to like it, but now I just want something that's functional and easy. Uh, and this definitely does it. Now I like to take my flush cutters and I clip all this stuff off here uh, as close to the head as possible. And just like that, now it's super clean. Look at that. Nothing beat, nothing's gonna beat that. All right, now let's go ahead and flip this back over. All right, now I'm very particular about this. I hope you are too. I always like to get this so the tabs are perfectly north-south. Does it really matter? No, but for me it does. All right. And this is the electric blue case. Uh, and I only have two more in stock. Uh, and once they're gone, this one's retired. We're gonna do a, a couple of new colors. I haven't figured out what they are yet. But um, I want to continue to offer the, the standards, the blacks, the grays, the whites, the reds, the, the dark blues, um, and then throw in some fun colors like the purple, the pink. Uh, we've got the, the mist, the purple mist in the DB15 version of the case, and we've got the um, cosmic white in the DB15 version of the case. Um, we've got this electric blue, which is going to go away. What else did we recently do? Um, the sea foam. I think we're fi we've finally sold the last one of those. Uh, so yeah, it was a, a good end of 2023, getting some of the you know the final colored cases out and making room for some of the new ones that uh, I want to come out. All right. Voila. All right. I hope that the person who bought this uh, is watching or at least watches it in, in the future because I think, uh, I think it's kind of neat when you get to watch your thing get assembled. So, all right, so there you go. Top is done. That looks pretty good. That blue with the silver, uh, that's a, that's a good, looking, good looking color. All right, let's go ahead and flip this over. Oh, we got pretty close. All right, now we're gonna use, not this one, this is the wiring harness for the lever, if you use that, but it also comes with the all button controller one as well. All right, <clears throat> so now what we're gonna do, is we're just gonna go ahead and, there we go. This isn't necessary, I'm just playing. Go ahead and connect here. Voila, now we have most all the wires hooked up to the board now. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the directionals here. So this is uh, left, down, right. Wait, is that right? And then up, I always do this. Yeah, left, down, right, whew. And fortunately right here on the easy board, it is all labeled. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of slide these wires out a little bit. <clears throat> and we're gonna take these two, this is up, so just Sling this over like so. And I'm not pushing these all the way down. I'm trying not to scratch anything or push anything out. I'm just getting them gently in place. Now we're gonna grab the red and the black under it. And this is down. And this just goes straight here. Cool. All right, then it goes left. That's just gonna I'm going to feed it up under like this. You don't have to worry about which color goes on which uh, spade connector here. They're all the, all you're doing is connecting the two and that's all that it needs. And now the green here, this is going to be our right. And so I'm actually going to put the ground on this one because it's a little bit of a tight fit. I think the next time I get more of these made, I have to, I'm gonna make the right just a little bit longer so that 
That way it's got a little bit of play. All right, and now we've got this. So let's grab some zip ties. I want you to keep track of the number of zip ties I've used. So far it's three. This will be number four. Okay, there's that. And I'm adding an extra one, not needed, but I'm gonna do it anyways. This is number five. Okay, let's go ahead and nip these. All right. And we're gonna stand the case up and push on the buttons and the wires from either side because if you push too hard, you can actually pop the cap out. All right. Now, when it comes to the wires to hook up the punches and kicks, to make this easy, I made all the wires black. That's awesome. Uh, hindsight being what it is, maybe I should have made them different colors, but I wanted it to look clean on the inside and I always like black wires. Um, okay, so the first two here, all the way to the left, the top and bottom, this is kick four. So I always start with the kicks and work my way down the wire bundle. So it's like kicks and then punches. And you'll notice, again, I'm just loosely fitting them because we're going to go back and we're going to actually push them all the way in and then wire, wire manage everything. All right. Let's kick two. Again, we're just working our way down the line. Very easy. You can go the other way. It's all up to you. Uh, but I prefer to do it this way. And it, it's actually a pretty fast process building one of these. Naturally, when we're on stream, I go a little bit slower. We're chatting. You know, it's a whole thing. So don't, uh, don't take the time on a stream build as, hey, this is how long this stuff takes, and I don't want to spend my time doing that. I mean, you can, and then just pay me, and I'll assemble it. I'm, I'm fine with it. Gives me more chances to stream anyways. <clears throat> Cool. And now we're working on the punches because the way this has worked, it's K4 through K1 and then P4 through P1. So it's real easy. You're not going to mess anything up. Worst case, you get a button out of whack, you just open her up, swap the wires. Very simple. Okay. And now punch one. That's the last one. You can hear that click, that's the button, the switch kind of reacting to the pressure of me trying to connect up the things and kind of getting loose in the housing. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this up on its side like this. This is just a technique I picked up many years ago uh, building this. I always put one button or one hand or a finger rather on the button and then I'm pushing the quick disconnects in place and I'm pushing and I'm seating them the rest of the way. And just work my way down the line very carefully, very slowly. These fit real tight. That's intentional. You don't want them to get loose during a play session or anything like that. Okay. Now we're going to work our way down to the, the directions. Doing my best to keep my head out of the camera. I remember looking back at some old streams and you just kind of you see this while I'm doing something and you're like, I can't see anything, man. What the hell? So, and you guys don't need to see my big bald head anyways. No one cares about that. All right. Cool. Now that's all done. Even now with the wires kind of willy nilly like this, it's still clean. Now what I do is I grab the whole bundle and you see I kind of bundle them up like this, grab a zip tie. I think we're, this is going to be number six. I put one pretty close to the, the wire harness as it comes off the board. And then here's number seven. I take this one, I tighten it, and I kind of get as close to where punch one and kick one branch off. And look at that. Look how nice that looks. 
Then I do it between after punch one, kick one, and between punch two, kick two. This is, uh, this is how we do networking on racks, and this is how we used to do all the wiring and the wiring harnesses on the submarine and stuff when I was there. I mean, I didn't do it. My guys did it, or the shipyard did it, but it's the way. All right, now we're going to need one more because I didn't grab enough. <clears throat> all right, and this one's completely optional, but I'm going to do it anyways. And now... Look at that, we have a nice trunk of wires. Let's go ahead and flush cut all this off. Boom. So there you go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 zip ties. That's what you need, 10, that's it. And you probably can get away with a lot less. Boom, look at that. That's a pretty neat wiring job if I do say so myself. <clears throat> and so it's interesting, people say, oh, now I want to go in and fix my wiring. Sheldon was here before we went to Lexington, and he built one, and my shop assistant, Angelica, who is on holiday right now and hasn't actually worked in a while, uh, built the other one. Angelica has built with me before. Uh, I'm, you know, She's not a fight stick person, she's not a gamer in general, but she's good at detail, and she's good at following directions, and she's willing to learn and try things. So I taught her how to build one, and I'm off into the other, the back room when everything was a little bit different down here. And I hear, no, Sheldon, that's not right. Jason's going to be mad at you. And I like put down what I was doing. I come over. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And she's like, his wiring looks, isn't, isn't the way you taught me how to do it. And I looked, I'm like, ah, this is garbage, Sheldon. I clipped it all off. I redid it. And she's like, I told you. And so, <laughs> um, so he learned a valuable lesson on how to wire the Jason Hicks way. All right, cool. Now the only thing we have left to do is one, this uh, USB cable. So we just connect it here, like so. We wrap this up. There's a million ways you can do this, but that's it. Very simple, easy to do, very clean when you're done, very modular. You can literally unplug this wire, pop your panel off, use this kit on your new panel with a lever and drop it in in a couple minutes. I think it'd be pretty straightforward, pretty easy. So, yeah. Okay, now at this point, uh, we would hook the Panzer up to my Windows PC, plug it in, open up joy.cpl, that's J-O-Y dot C-P-L. Here, I'm gonna write it down. It's important. Joy dot C-P-L, boom joy.cpl. That opens up your controller panel on uh, Windows and you can go through and do your button check there and it'll pop up and you go through, make sure everything's done right and voila, you're done. Uh, because my PC is all the way over there and I'm all the way over here and we're on stream and doing all this stuff, I can't do it on stream. When I get everything reset up and I have it properly configured to do a stream, we'll be able to do that in the future. Maybe you'll actually see this ugly face as well who knows we'll see but uh yeah so at this point this is the time you want to do that button check by the way while the case is still open because guess what it's much easier to fix a problem because you got a loose connection or something like that while the case is open than when it's shut because then you're gonna have to open it all up again it's a, a nightmare but i'm very confident in this so i'm gonna close it hopefully it's not a problem all right, so we get this lined up. You'll notice here this notch that's for the pass-through connector. So just make sure all the wires are out of the way. Line this thing up like so. And it slides back together very easy. And then we'll just put our, our eight screws back in. Like so. And then we have a controller done. And I do think I did tell you guys that we would try the uh, blue reactive nature of the case on stream. So I will do that. I didn't forget. You guys didn't need to remind me, even though no one did. It's all good. Uh, remember, uh, this code, the 10% off, it's good for everything in the shop. 10%. Just because you streamed with me today, you get 10% off. Make it count. 
please. Every time I stream, it'll be a new code. So that, that's Panzer Stream 1 or whatever I've made the code this, it'll be different next time. So this one's only gonna work for about 10 days and then it's gonna change. Or it's gonna change because I'm streaming again. So every time I stream, I'm gonna update the code. So what I'm doing is I've got a challenge to all the affiliates uh, to outperform my stream with their streams. We'll see if it happens. All right, so I think AA is gonna be very happy with this. I'm not using their name on stream because they may or may not care or they may or may not want me using their name on stream. I don't know. So out of respect to them, I'm not, but here we go. That looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Let me grab this black light. <clears throat> All right, it's just randomly clipped to my two by fours that are exposed. Surprisingly, this is really hard to find a black light bulb uh, when I needed it. It was super annoying. I remember when I was a kid, they were all the rage. I wasn't a kid that long ago, but it feels like that. All right, let's go ahead and plug this in. It may be too difficult to tell because of all the lights, but here you go. So there you go, we got the, blue, the black light. Yeah, it's not gonna show real well on stream. That's too bad. But if we hold it up and see, see how it kind of turns like a, and the buttons really react, don't they? Um, the powder, it just kind of, it changes a little bit. It's, it's, it's easier to see in person, but it kind of electrifies up a little bit. So that looks pretty cool. Maybe you can see a little bit on the edge. I don't know, it's hard. In person though, it looks pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and set this out of the way. All right, so there you go. I hope everyone enjoyed that. I know a lot of people have been asking me to stream a Panzer build for a long time, and I've been really reluctant to do it because I was going to have to dig a bunch of stuff out. But I had so much fun streaming in Lexington when we were there that I wanted to do it, uh, and I wanted to do more builds, and now we're able to do it. So let me know your feedback. Hit me up in Discord, discord.jasonscustoms.com. Uh, visit me on social media. Let's see where... There you go. This one, Twitter, at Jason's Customs. This one's Twitch. Well, you're here, so you know where that's at. And then what's this one? I can't tell. Is that Facebook? Yeah, it's Facebook. Also at Jason's Customs on Facebook. So um, you can follow me on all those. I'm most active here on Twitter. Um, this one, hopefully more in the future. This one I kind of forget about because I don't really like Facebook. I don't know why. Uh, over here, don't forget, use this code, 10% off between now and the 10th or whenever I stream next. I do have another build for someone up in Canada. We're going to be putting an ABMX together. That's going to be a fun build. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe this code's going to expire that quick. Maybe tomorrow's code will only be 5%. Who knows? I guess we'll see. But uh, I'm excited uh, for more of these things. So until next time, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jason. This has been jasonscustoms.com's Panzer IV Fight Stick build. I appreciate you all tuning in. I'll catch you guys later. Please be safe tonight. If you need a ride home, use Uber, use Lyft, or whatever you have wherever you're located. You need to get home safe. The world needs you in it. Don't do something dumb and drink and drive. Please be safe. Thank you, thank you. Until next time, have a good one. Out.